what is the ship of Theseus problem? Well, first of all, Theseus is a made-up character. He comes from Greek mythology, and it's a guy who sails the seas of Greece and kills a bunch of bad guys. So he's a hero. Imagine that Theseus has a ship and in this experiment we can imagine that all of the original pieces of the ship are black and one by one the pieces of the ship are going to be replaced by gray pieces. Maybe the pieces are metal. So over time somewhere in between of the time where it becomes totally gray and from the time it was originally all black, there's half black pieces and half gray pieces. And here is the problem of the ship of Theseus. If you are replacing all of the parts one by one, at what point is it a new ship? It's not quite clear what the answer to that is, but if it is eventually a new ship, when all of the original parts have been replaced, at what point did it become a new ship? So if I had a ship that was completely black, you wouldn't say it's a completely new ship if I just changed one part to be a gray part, or would you? M maybe you would. Maybe you think that as soon as you change one part of something, it's no longer the same thing at all. Imagine that you buy some sneakers and then you change the shoelaces. Just by changing the shoelaces, do you now have a new shoe? Well, that's basically the question that we are asking here. How do objects stay the same through change? This is a metaphysical question. Metaphysics is the study of what something is, its nature. And myriology is the study of the relationship between a whole thing, like a shoe, and the parts of the thing, like the shoe laces and the rubber part and the plastic part and the blah, blah, blah. So if you have a ship that is completely black and you change one thing, do you now have a completely new ship? And you might say no, but once you've replaced all of the black pieces with gray pieces, and now you have an all gray ship, don't you have a new ship? And if so, when? Like at what point did you end up with a new ship? This is an underlying issue called the problem of vagueness. The problem of vagueness gives us a lot of thought experiments. The ship of Theseus is just one of them. For example, imagine these words, old, tall, person, bald, wicked. At what point does a person get described as one of these? Okay, so person is on there. Let's just take that. Um, you're a ball of cells, but at some point you're a person. You're a person and at some point you're no longer a person. At what point does something become a person and then later it's no longer a person? Imagine the word bald. If I had no hair at all, you would call me bald. Okay, if I had one strand of hair, am I bald? You might think yes. If I had another strand of hair, am I bald? Maybe. If I had a full head of hair, am I bald? No. Well, at what point do I go from bald to not bald? That is vague. It's not clear what the cutoff is for being bald. Because it would be weird to say, oh, I removed one hair and now I'm bald, but before I wasn't bald. These are sometimes called sororities paradox. Sororities is the Greek word for heap, and it comes from the paradox called the heap of sand paradox. What is a heap of sand? If I grabbed a whole bunch of sand and I handed it to you, that's a heap of sand. But what if we took one sand out? Is that still a heap of sand? Sure. What if we took another piece of sand out? Is that still a heap? Sure. But what if we removed all but one grain of sand? Is that a heap of sand? No. But at what point does it no longer be a heap of sand or no longer be a bald person or no longer be the ship of Theseus? Imagine the electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic spectrum the part that's Roy G. Biv. 
red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet are these colors. And it's really obvious to you what a true orange is. And it's really obvious to you what a true red is. But at some point, red becomes orange. And it's not clear what the cutoff is. At some point, there's a person who now is bald but before they weren't, and when, that is unclear. So the ship of Theseus problem suffers from the problem of vagueness, and there's some kind of paradox because you get two, at least two, but maybe more incompatible conclusions that each one are problematic, and it's not clear what the right answer is. So returning to the ship of Theseus, here's the original way, and then I'll show you the second way that the ship of Theseus problem is illustrated. On one hand, when you have all of the original pieces, that's the ship of Theseus. But at some point, and it's not clear at what point, it is no longer the ship of Theseus. Unless you're someone who wants to say, even after we've replaced all of the parts one by one, it's still the ship of Theseus. Well, here's the twist from John Locke. What if every time we were replacing the original ship part, the person who was doing the construction was saving all of the old parts in some kind of like junkyard or something. So when there was a completely new set of pieces on the ship and on the ship there were no longer any of the original pieces, the construction worker person has all of the old pieces and then reassembles all of the original pieces. So there's the ship of Theseus that has had all of its parts replaced and then there is the reassembled discarded pieces from the original ship. Here's a new version of the ship of Theseus problem. Which one is the ship of Theseus? Is Theseus's ship the one that has slowly been replaced, but all of the pieces are different from the original ship. Is it the original pieces? And this is why it falls under the term of muriology. Muriology is the study between the parts of something that come together to make the whole, and then the whole. Does identity, what is the ship of Theseus, like which pieces, does it follow the parts of the ship? Or is it the whole thing? And if you replace all of the parts of the whole thing, do you now have a whole new thing? You can, might you might want to think about it in terms of you because you are growing hair and so you're also losing hair and you're losing lots of cells through digestion. You're also growing, you're changing, your taste buds are changing, your heart cells are replaced, your hands. The, a lot of you is being replaced. And the things you used to like are not the same as the things you like now. So your character traits are changing. Your physical, biological cells are changing. At what point are you no longer the same person you were when you were six? Or is it the case that even though all of your cells will eventually be replaced, you are still the same person even though you have totally different values, totally different interests, totally different language, totally different size and shape and profession? How do you as an object stay the same person even through all the change? Or how does a ship stay the same ship like belonging to Theseus, even though all of its parts have changed.